that it's supposed to be good. I've never used that. But uh, there are things that we can do to, to maintain a healthy body and uh, also eating natural organic food is, uh, is another thing that we can do and, and it's, uh, it's uh, I think, essential, you know, in terms of uh, – because we know that our body is under attack. The people who have been getting tested have found very high levels of these toxins and – our body needs vitamin D, and now it's being blocked on a regular basis. And uh, vitamin D is essential, from my understanding, in uh, keeping a healthy immune system. So that's another it's issue little... that's related. Yeah. Well, the vitamin D um, is, is absolutely important, and uh, you know we can't stress enough how important it is to have this in your in your health kit. Um, you know, vitamin D isn't technically a vitamin, it's actually a hormone, but we call it the sunshine hormone. Um, it helps boost your immune system and the majority of the world and particularly in the northern hemisphere are really deficient in this now. Um, we you know, we've we've been and had our own tests done. Um, I've actually had arguments with our chemists here about um, you know uh, allowing, I went. I went to have my D D levels um, tested. Well, I actually went in just to speak to the doctor about the vitamin D issue, and um, he made me go and get tested before I could get access to any vitamin D. Now, I find that found that extraordinary that he actually assumed that I needed to do that when vitamin D is actually available in health stores anyway. So that was a bit of a lesson to, that, the, that these doctors have their heads in the sand um, over so many of these issues. He didn't want to even speak about um, Morgellons or chemtrails. You know, he did originally, and then I think he took it to his board and, and probably Googled, um, you know, that, that this is a disease of the mind and, and then dropped it. So um, I don't have any open communication even with a medical doctor at this point. Uh, on this issue, yet we're seeing the spread of more gallons just going rife. Um, it, it's just beyond me, Michael. I, I, you know, we've got to reach these people at these higher levels. Speaking of which, um, you you have a uh, court case running. Is that correct, Michael? How, how are we getting along with um, your class action suit? Well, it's not mine, but uh, an attorney up in Northern California, Joe Marmon, is, uh, is putting together uh, a lawsuit, uh, and I believe it's against the California Air Quality Resources Board or, or one of the, uh, the air quality districts for failure to, uh, to act on the contamination. Uh, again, the contamination, not only in that area, but many areas around the world, cannot be disputed of aluminum bearing and strontium, and uh, it's the job of many of these uh, agencies to report the uh, the contamination, and a uh, number of them, uh, actually most of them, have not been doing that. And I think the reason is I think they're deeply concerned uh, about this issue, and I think they have no idea what to do. So their plausible deniability or just uh, ignoring this issue is, is simply, I think, easier for them. However, uh, it's up right. to us, you know, we the, we the people, to hold them accountable if it's their job. We need to uh, we need to make sure that they're doing it and uh, protecting us. And, 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 again, the contamination is there, so if, if they're not doing their job, uh, I think it's up to us. So if you're in the Northern California area, uh, you can contact Joe Marmon. I don't have his contact information now, but if you're in a different area and, uh, and you want to move forward with this, um, certainly contact Joe and, and get some advice on, on how to move forward with this. I think it's absolutely essential. But, but uh, to answer your question, I, uh, the case is coming along well. Uh, from my understanding, there are a number of plaintiffs on it, and uh, we'll see what happens. Keep on praying. Fantastic, and, and pray we will. Um, you know, we're at a point where where do you turn? Um, Michael, there's a question in from our station manager, Nighthawk. He, he asked, have you gone back to D.C. since we replaced a third of the house to see if the new guys will listen? Um, I have not. I have not been back to, uh, to D.C., but, but I think it's important. I think it's one thing that, that we all need to do is, is to, uh, you know, address this. And it's also important to use the word geoengineering when we need to uh, address this politically. But, uh, no, we haven't been back. Um, Typically, most of the politicians who are in power, and it was interesting because we had 
uh, former Senator Karen Johnson by in the film, and she spoke to us about, you know, her understanding, her concerns about the issue. And uh, off camera, she spoke about why she was uh, unable to address this while in office. And while I don't have a lot of respect for many of our politicians, I do have respect for some, and I think that some have uh, some good intentions. However, I think as a politician, it's a very difficult issue to deal with because, A, if you admit that it's going on, then they have an obligation to address this. And I really think that a lot of them have no idea how to uh, address this issue. So for them, I think it's easier to, uh, the ones that are concerned about it, just go with their plausible deniability. And, and uh, you know, I don't support that at all um, because of the devastation. Um, you know, people are being hurt. People are dying. Their immune systems are being compromised, and we're seeing uh, fallout in, in our ecosystem. So playing politics is, is really uh, no way to address it because we're in a real crisis. So I want to reach out. You know, I, I'm, I try and reach out, not in condemnation, but, uh, you know, just uh, trying to encourage our, our public leaders to address this. And, and we are so very grateful to you for your, for your work in this. As I said earlier, it's propelled many of us um, into action. You know, one of the, the leading uh, chemtrailers here is, or geoengineering, however, whatever words you want to use when addressing this, is uh, Claire Swinney from Northland Chemtrail Watch. And she's just been a powerhouse for getting uh, information in every form out. Um, you know, she, she had an opening uh, for what in the world are they spraying. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's hard to um, put yourself forward to do these things uh, here in such a small place, Michael. Um, you know, there's only four million people in our country. So you, you are very much seen, if you know what I mean. But she's just put herself out there against all odds and um, really been amazing. And another, another activist that we have here is, is Vinny Eastwood. This week he, weekend he um, had a chemtrail rally up in Auckland and you know there was a very very poor turnout but we're seeing this but we also realise that the following year there will be more awareness and even more awareness the year after and that's what we're doing so you know when, when these when, when we put these uh, events on and and you know there's a sort of a, a slow um, build up to the awareness um, just hang in there guys hang in all the activists that are putting all their, their efforts into this because, you know, we're, we're seeing the awareness grow. And, Michael, also, um, you know, one of the, the tools in our kit is we're so very grateful to you and um, your co, co-workers for allowing us to copy this um, What in the World Are They Spraying? I mean, I have one of those in my handbag all the time and um, that's, that that movie is going out everywhere, and and because of your good heart, I mean you're not making any money on that or or any anything else. But um, we thank you for giving us one very major tool, because it's, it's it's at a level where it can reach most people, whether they're aware of the agenda or not. That's correct, and I'm glad that you brought that up because yeah, we are encouraging anyone who purchases a DVD to make copies and hand out for free. We have. Uh, some people that hand out thousands per month. As a result of that, uh, we've literally millions of people have seen the film, and it's been one of the catalysts to, to waking up millions of people. So I encourage everybody, and also it helps me uh, address this on, on a daily basis because we uh, obviously don't get paid uh, for doing this, but, but we do uh, make a little bit of money from the DVD. So uh, if you'd like to support and uh, become an activist and make copies, you can go to my website, which is www.truthmediaproductions.us. Uh, again, www.truthmediaproductions.us. And I uh, really appreciate the support. Thank you. Michael, we're, we're um, putting those um, all your links into chat there. Um, including your Facebook account and uh, Coalition Against Geoengineering. So they're there for anyone in chat that wants those. 
Okay, Michael, I have a question for you. Um, when I was down in California, one of the things that I noticed, and I, we touched briefly on this on the phone, um, was that some of the same chemicals that were being found being sprayed with the out of the, the backs of the planes um, were also being found in concentrations around some of the power plants. And, you know, along those lines, um, I was wondering if we could talk about any other methods. I mean, because anybody that researches this, and we're all familiar with the spraying, you know, from the planes. But if you're familiar with any other ground-based methods or, or any other methods that they might use in order to put these same chemicals up into our atmosphere. Well, I definitely think that they are. I don't have documentation yet, but... Uh, I've, obviously, I've been in contact with people in Hawaii. I've been back there many different times and actually helping to write a bill which would ban uh, aerosol spraying above Maui. And what they're seeing on radar, because they haven't seen too much aircraft, they are seeing aerosols. And uh, on the radar, it appears that they're either emitting them from uh, either uh, canisters that, that might emit them that could be shot, shot in the sky. It looks, I guess, like a kind of like a bomb, or perhaps from boats. I did see aerosols behind a mountain uh, while driving, not sure exactly what it was. So I definitely believe uh, that there is technology out there. And I have seen uh, on YouTube, uh, apparently NASA has a cloud-making machine. So yes. uh, you should be able to YouTube that. So we know the technology is available. It looks like they're deploying it. And uh, uh, it does look like they want to keep... Uh, these metals, these aerosols in the sky uh, at all times. So I think they're using many different uh, methods. Right, and I saw that video that you're speaking of, and it was a po it, that um, cloud making machine is actually portable, and they so that they can move it from from place to place. So and it's also ground based, and I was absolutely amazed at how quickly it showed up on the radar images <laughs> after mm. they used it. So, yeah, and, and I am glad you brought that up because it's not just the planes, you know, that are, although that's what we're normally used to seeing, it's not just the planes that are capable of putting these things in our atmosphere. Well, what we, what we are seeing here, Michael, I, I sort of live in an area that's been likened to Hawaii. So we live between the mountains and the sea. So I have a, a view of what's happening on the seaside and I have a view of what's happening on the mountainside. Now, out on the sea, we have a permanent fog bank. It never, ever leaves now. The locals call this the uh, easterly. But the easterly there is there in a norwester, a southerly, you name it, the, the, the cloud bank is there. So they they bring the fog in from there. We we can't see the horizon. We haven't seen it for a very long time. And I know that Marnie addresses this issue with you in, in your film as well, uh, Marnie from Hawaii. So if anyone's on the coast and, and, you know, just look out onto the horizon and tell me if, if what you're seeing is real. Now, at, in the evening and at dawn, um, the, this area glows. It glows like we're living in Hawaii. So, you know, we, it's not normal for us to have these pink clouds floating by. You know, you've got a white one, then a black one, then a pink one, just, you know, sort of meandering across the sky. Um, and behind us, we have absolutely a weather-making operation. They are cloud seeding from behind the hills here. And um, they appear to be doing it in, you know, a couple of different ways. But what, what I have noticed is that, you know, when they begin the harping, there is always a point of emanation. There is a point from where, where the cloud base fans out you know, and, and, and anyone with half a brain knows that, you know, that the, the, the cloud doesn't fan, blow one way and then blow up and then blow across the other way, causing a fan. So this is where the harping's emanating from. If you look at that point, that's where your cloud-making machine is or your harp antenna is. Um, so, you know, we're seeing a, a couple of different methods being deployed here. And, um, you know, one's ground-based and one's air-based, without a doubt. They're using our Alpine fault line to, to do this here. Um, and we're now seeing evidence of that happening uh, across the globe. Joy's also uh, been investigating, you know, factories that are blowing barium-type smokes out. Do you want to talk a little about that, Joy? Did yeah, that's kind of what I was touching on earlier. I had a friend that lived in Southern California that was seeing um, 
clouds being pumped out of a, a gas power gen or natural gas power generating plant. 